The movie starts in 1950 in Hong Kong, where Eat Mund and his friend named Long Khan inspect an apartment to open Eat Mund's first Wing Chun school. Several days later, despite distributing flyers, no students show up because Eat Mund isn't well known in Hong Kong yet. Instead, an elderly woman uses the space to dry clothes. Every day, Eat Mund is waiting for a student to come. After that, he returns home to help his pregnant wife, Wing Sing, who is expecting their second child. With financial difficulties, Eat Mund finds it hard to pay for his son Eep Chun's school fees, which motivating him to open the martial arts school. One day, a young man named Wong Lung visited Eep Mund. At that moment, Eep Mund explained Wing Chun to him, and Wong Lung challenged him to a fight. He said if he lost, he would become Eep Mund's student and pay his school fees. At first, Eat Mund was hesitant, but agreed to the duel. After losing, Wang Long left without showing respect to Eat Mund. Later that evening, he returned with his three friends who doubted Eat Mund's skills. At that moment, they even insulted him, saying they would have mistaken him for a laundry worker if Wang Long hadn't told them otherwise. After that, they challenged Eat Mund, who reluctantly agreed, and another fight began. Shortly after, Eat Mund won again and, feeling frustrated by their disrespect, left the scene promptly. Suddenly, Wang Long showed respect and expressed his wish to learn from Eat Mund. His friends also wanted to join. Upon knowing this, Wang Long claimed seniority due to his initial respect. And from that day, they all became Eat Mund's students officially. In the following days, Eat Mund taught Wing Chun to his students. As time passed, more people joined and they all wore martial arts uniforms. One day, during training, Wang Long asked about Eat Mund's skill in defeating 10 armed opponents alone. Upon hearing this, Eat Mund stressed avoiding fights and suggested fleeing if faced with armed enemies. Afterward, Eat Mund asked his students to pay their school fees. However, because of the ongoing economic difficulties in China, not all of them could afford it. Because of that, Eat Mund had to discuss this situation with his wife to find a solution. Later that day, while buying cakes, Eat Mund saw someone being attacked for stealing food. When he realized it was Quan, Eat Mund stepped in and paid for the stolen food. After that, Yao told Eat Mund that his father, who had left earlier, was suffering from mental problems after being shot by the Japanese. After hearing this, Eat Mund felt guilty and blamed himself for the situation and tears filling his eyes. After learning about Yo's family situation, Eat Mund promised to help take care of his father from then on. The next day, Eat Mund took Yao to meet Long Khan at the newspaper office in Hong Kong. At that moment, Eat Mund asked Long Khan to recommend a job for Yao, and Long Khan agreed immediately because of Eat Mund's support. As a result, Yao started working as a journalist. The following morning, Wang Long put up Wing Chun flyers on street walls. Soon after, a gang of market thugs led by Qi showed up and destroyed the flyers. At first, Wang Long thought the group was interested in Wing Chun. However, they were actually upset because Wang Long's flyers covered theirs. So, Wang Long challenged Qi to a fight. After agreeing to a one-on-one -on -one match, the fight started. However, when Wang Long won the fight, the other three attacked him. Later, the three thugs approached Eat Mund and said they had captured Wang Long. They also demanded money for his release and told Eat Mund to meet them at the fish market. Upon hearing this, Eat Mund immediately thought of a solution. That evening, Eat Mund went alone to the fish market. When he met Qi and the others, Eat Mund asked them politely to let Wang Long go. When Eat Mund saw Wang Long's injuries, he asked why they attacked him. Wang Long then explained that it happened after he beat Qi. Hearing this, Qi and the others became angry, but Eat Mund assured them that he would talk to their teacher to clear things up. When Eat Mund asked about their teacher, they refused to tell him, claiming their teacher was superior. After that, he asked Eat Mund for money. Since Eat Mund didn't have it, Qi told his friends to attack him, starting a fight. Despite the initial attack, Eat Mund defended himself. Then, Qi told them to use weapons, making the situation worse. Shortly after, Eat Mund managed to disarm one of them and quickly freed Wang Long. Upon seeing this, Wang Long realized that his teacher could indeed fight more than 10 people alone. 
Anticipating another attack, Yeet Mund took charge and told Wang Lun to stay close as they faced the group again. After capturing one of the attackers, Yeet Mund told Wang Lun to leave quickly. Just then, Qin Shanzhou, whom Yeet Mund had defeated in Fashion before, arrived with a group of market traders. Showing maturity, Jin intervened and stopped the thugs, allowing Yeet Mund to go without any trouble. But their relief didn't last long. A crown and police officers gathered, including Master Hong, a practitioner of the Honga school. Master Hong asked about Yeet Mund's school, and Yeet Mund explained what happened with his student. However, Master Hong seemed unhappy, thinking Yeet Mund favored Wing Chun over Hong Ga. Master Hong then explained the requirements for Yeet Mund to open a martial arts school in Hong Kong, highlighting the necessity of defeating all the local masters. Afterward, a policeman called Fatso accompanied Yeet Mund, Jin, and Wang Lung to the police station. That night, Hung and Fatso met with a corrupt policeman named Wallace. As Hong Kong was under British rule, they handed over a sum of money to Wallace, which included fees from martial arts schools, the fish market, and ticket sales from Western boxing matches. Wallace then referred this money as protection money. When Hung asked for a share of the money to give to the workers, Wallace firmly declined and immediately kicked him out, despite Hung and his group always obeying Wallace's orders. After that, Wallace told Fatso to leave as well. Meanwhile, in the jail where Eat Mund and the others were kept, it was noticed that Jin had lost hearing in his right ear due to Eat Mund's strong punch in their previous fight at Foshin. Later, Wang Long, still feeling resentful, thought about seeking revenge. However, Eat Mund quickly scolded him. Jin then commented that Wang Long reminded him of his younger self, full of arrogance without considering the consequences. He also suggested that if Wang Long wanted to improve himself, he should find a wife, as marriage and family responsibilities often bring wisdom to men. After a while, Wing Sing and Long Khan showed up with the money needed to bail out from the Hong Kong jail. Following them, Jin's wife and child came with the same purpose. Since no one else volunteered to pay for Wang Long's release, Eat Mund turned to Long Khan for help again. Unfortunately, Long Khan didn't have the money anymore. At that moment, Jin, showing his newfound kindness, offered his own money to Eat Mund. When they got back home, Eat Mund and his wife rested, knowing that the next day he would have sparing matches against all the masters in Hong Kong. The next day, Eat Mund went to the designated place, where all the Hong Kong masters were waiting for him. Shortly after, Master Hone introduced Eat Mund and explained that if he could stay on the table without falling, it would mean he could start his own school. At the same time, without their knowledge, Yao, now working as a journalist, secretly covered the event. Shortly after, Eat Mund calmly approached the sparing table after his reintroduction. The first challenger, Master Law from the Northern Praying Mantis School, stepped forward, starting the initial fight. After Master Law's defeat, Master Chang from the Bagua Hung School became the next challenger for the second fight. Then, after Master Chang's defeat, the final challenger, Master Hong, the formidable master of the Hongga School, took his place. Being the oldest and strongest among the Hong Kong masters, Master Hong immediately attacked upon stepping onto the table, starting the decisive battle. As they were evenly matched, the fight ended in a tie. From that day, Eat Mund earned his place among the masters of Hong Kong. However, Master Hong insisted that for security reasons, Eat Mund must pay a monthly fee of $100. Upon hearing this, Eat Mund declared his readiness to face any further challengers, but firmly refused to pay any fee. Angry at Eat Mund's refusal, Master Hong demanded that Eat Mund leave immediately. The next day, news spread about the draw between Wing Chun and Hung Ga, sparking more interest in Wing Chun across Hong Kong. Upon hearing this, Master Hong instructed his students to disrupt the Wing Chun school, leading to an inevitable clash between the two schools. As a result, Yip Mund had to find a new place to teach Wing Chun. Not long after, Yip Mund approached Master Hong, expressing his determination to continue teaching despite losing his place and refusing to pay any fees. He also warned against disturbing his students. However, Master Hong defended his actions, saying they were the result of Eat Mun's refusal to follow the rules. 
He also stressed the importance of monthly fees for martial arts schools to handle challenges from Western influences. Shortly after, Eat Mund stressed the importance of teachers passing on valuable lessons to their students, regardless of the situation. Then he prepared to leave, but Master Hong stopped him, insisting that their previous conflict needed resolution right away. Master Hong then attacked Eat Mund. During the fight, Master Hong's son appeared, and Eat Mund shielded him from harm as Master Hong prepared to strike. Shortly after, Master Hong's wife and children arrived and invited him to join them for a meal. After that, Eat Mund returned Master Hung's son, questioning whether winning the fight was more important than sharing a meal with family. After that, Eat Mund left. From then on, Master Hong gained a newfound respect for Eat Mund. That night, all the martial arts equipment was moved back to Eat Mund's home where he explained to his wife that they couldn't use the previous training place anymore because someone else rented it. After that, all of his students left except Wan Long, who wanted to talk to him. The next day, Master Hong, now respecting Eat Mund, came to his training place. At that moment, he gave Eat Mund a free tickets to a Western boxing event. Before leaving, Eat Mund asked about Hong's health, noticing he didn't seem well. But Hung only said that he was fine and left quickly. The next day, the Western boxing event began and all martial arts schools were invited to showcase their skills. At first, Master Hung's students demonstrated their techniques. Then, an English boxer named Twister arrived, brought in by Wallace to be the star of the event. Despite being called a world champion, Twister showed arrogance and disrespect toward others. When Twister saw the Kung Fu demonstration, he insultingly compared it to a dance. After that, he entered the ring to challenge Chinese Kung Fu. After Master Hung's students finished their performance, Twister asked Ki to hit him, but when Ki did, Twister attacked him and the other students. After that, he mocked Chinese Kung Fu, saying its practitioners were better at dancing than martial arts. After conflicts and disturbances arose, Eat Mund and Master Hung entered the ring. As Twister became angrier, Master Hung swiftly kicked him, demanding an apology for his disrespectful behavior. At that moment, Twister refused and challenged Master Hung to a duel, proposing that if Master Hung won, he would apologize. Upon hearing this, Master Hung accepted. He then told everyone to sit back in their places, and the first round of the match began. During the fight, Master Hong and Twister were evenly matched. In the break, Eat Mun suggested keeping distance and targeting Twister's arm muscles. Master Hong also agreed, but found it challenging. In the second round, Twister's powerful punch knocked Master Hong down, but he managed to get up by the count of nine. After the second round ended, Master Hong's asthma got worse. Upon realizing this, Eat Mun suggested stopping the match, but Master Hong refused. He believed that Twister's disrespect for Chinese Kung Fu couldn't be tolerated. After that, the third round began, but Master Hung's asthma made it hard for him to fight. And he fell again, but he insisted on continuing despite his worsening condition, rejecting Eat Mun's attempt to end the match. Shortly after, Twister continued to attack him viciously, focusing on his face, which sadly led to Master Hung's passing. At Master Hung's funeral, Eat Mund came to pay his respects, recognizing Master Hong as a highly respected teacher. The following days, the news of Master Hong's death spread through newspapers, where Wallace and his group held a press conference, trying to deny any responsibility and painting themselves as innocent victims. During the conference, Twister worsened the situation with his racist comments, insulting and provoking Chinese fighters. He boldly challenged any Chinese person to face him even threatening deadly consequences, questioning their bravery. At the same time, Eat Mund arrived, promptly accepting Twister's challenge. The next day, while Eat Mund focused on training, he asked a neighbor named Fuan to look after Wing Sing and Eat Chun so they wouldn't be disturbed by the noise. Before parting, Wing Sing encouraged him to focus on his training, promising her prayers for his success in the upcoming fight. In the following days, Eat Mund dedicated himself to intense training with his wooden dummy. During his training period, Wing Sing gave birth without telling Eat Mund, not wanting to distract him. As the match day neared, excitement grew across Hong Kong, especially among the Chinese people, 
who listened eagerly to the live radio broadcast. To them, the match meant more than just winning. It represented the preservation of national pride and the honor of Chinese Kung Fu. On the other hand, Yi Mund quietly positioned himself in a corner of the ring, waiting for Twister to enter. Shortly after, Twister, the arrogant boxer, arrived, proudly displaying his country's flag. Just before the match began, Twister insulted Yi Mund, bragging that he could defeat him with just two punches. Then, the first round started. In the first round, Twister's powerful hook punch knocked Eat Mund down, but Eat Mund got up at the count of nine, determined to continue. Shortly after, it was Twister who fell to the ground. Moving into the second round, Eat Mund started to take control. However, towards the end of the round, Twister resorted to cheating, causing Eat Mund to fall. Additionally, the judges fearing Twister's potential loss quickly enforced a rule banning Eat Mund from using kicks. Despite this limitation, Eat Mund accepted it, and the third round began. Hindered by this rule, Eat Mund, somewhat distracted, suffered another knockdown. However, upon regaining consciousness, he remembered Master Hong's advice and his strategic approach, focusing on keeping his distance and targeting Twister's arm muscles. Shortly after, he getting up again at the count of seven, and Eat Mund stood ready to secure victory. Shortly after, the final round started, resulting in the defeat of Twister, the arrogant boxer. As the referee began the count, along with all the Chinese spectators, joyful cheers for Eat Mund echoed throughout Hong Kong. Addressing the crowd, Eat Mund stressed that the importance of the match was not about proving the superiority of Chinese Kung Fu over Western boxing, but rather about fostering mutual respect among people. After the fight, Eat Mund quickly went home to be with his family. He was overjoyed to find that his second son, whom he named Yip Chin, had safely arrived. Soon after, Yo came to Yip Mun's house with a 10-year-old boy named Li Shoulong. This young boy, who had aspirations to learn Kung Fu from Yip Mun, was none other than a young Bruce Lee. When Yip Mun saw the boy, he smiled kindly and told him to go back home, suggesting that he come back when he was older. Moral lesson from the story, if someone insults your laundry skills, just beat them in a fight, and they'll want to be your student. But if they insult your martial arts, make sure you have a plan and maybe some friends to help out.